Claire, let me first ask you about your decision to keep the dividend. A lot of uh, a lot of companies have been giving it up, not just because of pressure uh, from from the the pandemic, but pressure from governments uh, as well. Are, have you considered reducing your or cutting your dividend completely? Good morning to you both. Um, thank you for having me on the, the call this morning. Um, yes, yeah, so absolutely. A really unusual and unprecedented quarter that we've seen in the first quarter. And in light of what we consider to be some good, strong results in what's been a difficult quarter, um, we've, of course, observed the environment and we've considered what we should be doing um, around dividend proposal. And DWS has, is proposing to maintain its dividend of €167 Euros per share in respect of the um, financial year of 2019. We, we do acknowledge that there's a lot of regulatory guidance that's been coming out over the past weeks. And in taking that guidance um, into account and read really the spirit of what that guidance is in observing the environment um, that we're operating in at the moment, we have taken the decision to defer our AGM till the, later on in the year into Q4 of 2020, as opposed to what was originally scheduled for June. And that enables us to really em embrace the spirit of the regulation, to give us the benefit of time. Um, but we are maintaining our proposal of 167 per share. Can I ask you about, good morning to you, Claire. Can I ask you about net outflows? You talk of uh, net outflows in the first quarter burdened by Corona pandemic's impact on markets. Where is it that those outflows are, are, are going from? Is, are, are, are clients taking money out of passive, out of active, active equities, bonds, real estate? Where's the money leaving? Yeah, so after a really strong period in 2019 of inflows in every quarter of 2019, we started 2020 very strong in January and February. We, in fact, had nine billion of inflows over those first two months of the year. And then, of course, we saw the complete dislocation in the markets, which saw a turn in the month of March, where we saw approximately 11 billion of outflows, which leads to our result of 2.5 billion of outflows for the full quarter. And indeed, we, we saw the flight to safe havens and the requirement for a, a risk off um, approach from our clients during that period of March. And that has resulted in a shift out of, in particular, um, passive equity ETFs in the, in the month of March and in some of those more riskier asset classes and towards cash and money market-like funds. We have also seen um, in our alternatives portfolio inflows there. So we've seen a stable period um, of investment across the alternatives platform. But outflows coming from um, SQI, from ETFs on the equity side and from fixed income. Uh, I wonder what your, your clients with liquidity are doing right now, Claire. I mean, if, if clients have cash, do you see them remaining conservative for the most part, remaining on the sidelines, or are they using these dips that we've seen throughout the pandemic as an opportunity to buy? Well, I think March was really an exceptional period where we, we saw that, that sudden rea reaction for risk off, which I've outlined. As we look to the early parts of Q2, we are starting to see some return to positive flows in our retail and in our passive businesses. So there is certainly um, a shift, you know, a conservative shift back into some of those asset classes that we've, we've seen outflows in in the period of March. Obviously, it's, it's too early to um, really consider um, whether this is a, a permanent shift, but it does demonstrate that having a diversified asset base and being able to meet our clients' requirements across all asset classes during these periods of stress is really important. And I think that's where we are able to meet client demands across both retail and institutional cha channels. Of course, cash um, and the ability for, for our clients to manage their cash flow requirements and have access to cash and money market funds and liquidity is very important at this point in time. And we've seen strong inflows in, in cash during this period. Claire, we've talked in the past about M&A. You've said as a business you're always open to the idea, but you're not in any particular hurry. Does the crisis throw up opportunities on that front? Um, I think when we look forward, certainly, I, I think this unique period will be a catalyst for change as we look post-crisis, and I'm sure we'll be triggering 
um, a degree of M&A activity, and we, we've always been quite vocal in saying that we will be looking to participate in those opportunities in the future. I think if we look right now, um, management and our team is very much focused on responding to this COVID um, environment that we're operating in at the moment and ensuring that we can meet our clients' needs and fulfill our fiduciary obligations in this, in this near term. But certainly um, opportunities will arise in the future and we're very focused on, on what those mega trends will be and how we can participate in those. One trend, of course, has been uh, workers doing everything from home. I'm, I wonder how much of your staff is working from home, Claire? And how, how many of them do you think are going to want to continue to work from home? Is it, is it working? Yeah, so I, I think, you know, if, if you'd asked me last quarter if we'd have had in excess of 90% of our staff working from home, um, I wouldn't probably have thought that was possible, but it absolutely has been. I think the operational and technology resilience that we've seen in the firm has been really outstanding. And also it's been a real test of how um, people, our staff, our teams and our clients are collaborating and engaging in different forms, leveraging technology and leveraging digital channels. So we've been forced into accelerating how we leverage technology and how we work together. And I have to say that's proven to be very successful in this first quarter, and I think we'll continue to do so. So certainly it will change the way we work in the future. Um, it will break down some of the boundaries that have perhaps been there in the past, and it will open up new opportunities for us to, to consider.